Why am I muted? Hello, hello. Okay. Can you hear me okay? I am sorry I'm late. I had a little bit of, um, I was having some technical difficulties with uh, my camera this morning. So hopefully everything, I had to switch over to my old camera because my new camera decided it doesn't want to work. So we'll see how today goes, you guys. It's been a minute. <clears throat> so I didn't give myself that much time because you just assume your equipment's going to work. And then sometimes it doesn't. So hello. Hope you guys are doing fantastic. Um, I'm Teresa with Teresa Renee Art. I am, um, if you don't know me, I'm also the owner of Decoupage Queen. We have been coming to you, I don't know what week we're on. Let's see, we're on week 11. Uh, we're, we've been coming to you weekly with some pent art demos. Last week we had Terry covering for me while I was on vacation doing, um, I think she did chrome powders. Is that right? Uh, and then the week before we had um, Nancy uh, covering for me. And I don't remember what Nancy was doing. Um, something fun, <laughs> right? Um, or was it Nancy that did crow powders? Anyway, I was um, in Southern Utah, Las Vegas with my uh, family on a vacation. And I am back. I have spent the whole week trying to catch up, um, which is easier said than done sometimes. But I wanted to show you guys. Um, I do have my cup that we did with the ceramic. Um, I am drinking out of my coffee mug that we did with the ceramic decoupage glue. And it has gone through the dishwasher, you guys. So I wanted to share this with you um, because it's working. I finished it. It's working great. And it's going to be my Saturday morning cup. And we'll see how it looks by the end of week 40. Um, okay, Nancy did pigments, and then what did uh, what did Terry do last week? Um, just so I know, just so I know, I don't want to repeat the same thing. Um, so I'm gonna drink my coffee. <laughs> this is cup number two, so that I can at least form words. Um, chrome. Okay, Nancy did pigments, and then oh, I see. So Nancy did the metal pigments and does she do mica powders too, or just the metal pigments and pigment fix? And then uh, Terry did chrome powders. Is that right? All right, cool. Um, or do I have it the other way around? Anyway, you guys get the idea. You have now learned about chrome powders and pigment powders. It's like, Oh, uh, what's the difference, right? Today we're going to be talking about glue. We have a lot of glue. There's so much glue. We've already done decoupage glue, which is its own category. Um, today we're going to be talking about all the specialty glues. Um, in the picture, it showed a couple glues that we actually don't have. We don't have every glue that Pentart makes. And I'm just going to say tell you the glues that we don't have right now. Uh, we don't have their cardboard, they have a glue for cardboard. We don't have that. They have a glue for mosaic and stone, and we don't have that. They have a, um, a glue for, there is a textile glue, you guys. I've tried it, and I personally didn't, I didn't care for it that much. I'm just going to be honest, so I didn't get it in. Um, I prefer the fabric medium as a textile glue. I think that's an awesome textile glue. Um, there's a felt glue. They have a glue for felt. I haven't tried it, so I don't know. But any of those glues that we don't have, if you want them, let your retailer know and we can get in things. this one. Can you guys hear me? Okay. I switched my microphone. Can you hear me now? 
let me know. Thumbs up. Yes or no. Can you hear me? Still no sound? Is it back? It's back. Okay. So I switched it. Hopefully it doesn't keep going in and out. Um, golly. It's like my computer decided it didn't want to work and now my camera. So my brand new camera stopped working. So I'm, I'm working off the old one. So anyway, I bought the new camera for a reason because my old one stopped working. So frustrating. Anyway, so um, any of those other specialty glues, if you decide that, you know, hey, I, I really need a glue for cardboard, which I don't, I don't know, maybe there's a reason why you would need a special glue for cardboard. Felt, I can understand because um, the surface is unique on felt. So I don't know, but I didn't get them. I don't have them all just because I don't, I don't want products to sit on my shelves. Um, but I do have a lot. So that's what we're going to cover today is all the stuff that we do have. So let me switch my view. Good morning, everybody. Thank you guys for being here on a Saturday morning. Thank you also for supporting Nancy and Terry while I was gone. Um, please make sure to follow both of them. They they are both very, very talented artists. Um, and they've been, both have been on my team for a long time. And they really understand all of the ins and outs of all of these products. So they are great teachers to learn from, for sure. Um, also, um, if you're one of our retailers, feel free to share your link in the comments so that people know how to get all these products. If you got like 50% of the glues, even I, you know, I'm, I don't expect that all of my retailers are going to have every single glue, but they know it's available and they can get it if you need it. Right. So that's kind of how we come at this thing. Um, there's a lot of glue here, you guys. So I went by the shop this morning. And uh, thank you, Mara. And I grabbed them all. So we're going to kind of look at them one by one and then we're going to open a few. We're not going to do, we're not going to demonstrate every single one of them, but I am going to talk about each one of them. Um, of course, let's start with my absolute favorite. Um, and I'm not, I'm not, I'm not talking about heavy body gel either, because that's in its own category. You guys know this is among my favorites. It is. It's, it's a very versatile product. We talked about this on week one because it's so important. So we're not going to recover this, but this is probably like the most versatile glue that we have, which is very thick gel. So catch week one if you want to know more about heavy body gel, but we're going to, we're not going to include that in the glue demo because this is its own, it's its own thing. So apart from heavy body gel, which is my number one favorite, this is my second favorite glue. This is Express Glue. Um, Express Glue is, um, it's got a very fine tip. Um, it is absolutely perfect for putting together uh, MDF kits or craft wood kits like from Dina or um, Rust Cover Cottage, uh, any of our handcrafted holiday traditions or AB Studios blanks or kits are some of our buildable kits. You're gonna use this glue to assemble it. It is a very fast drying glue. It's gonna, it's sticky and tacky immediately and it dries clear and it dries quick. So it's got this nozzle and this is probably my most used universal glue that it's like, oh, I just need some, something kind of like an Elmer's maybe, but better than Elmer's. <laughs> This is what I'm gonna use, okay? Um, so speaking of Elmer's, if you want just a good all-purpose basic craft type glue for light duty, right? This isn't gonna be, you're, you know, you can assemble MDF with this, but this one is called Hobby Glue Universal. And this one is probably more on grade with Elmer's. Um, it comes in a jar. So you can, you, the way you use this is like with a, a brush. 
Um, and it's just a very good craft grade glue. So this one is Hobby Glue Universal. This one also dries clear. Um, this one would be great for crafting or paper. <coughs> But you can also use it for MDF. It's just going to dry. It takes a little bit longer to dry. Um, and, and it doesn't have the, the nozzle like my favorite Express Glue. Um, but this is definitely a very good basic glue. Um, and that same line, the Hobby Glue, this one is, is Hobby Glue Tacky. So we are going to talk about, we've got three different tacky glues, which we're going to talk about. Actually, we have five. We're going to talk about each one of the tacky glues separately. So I'm going to stick that over here for now. Uh, metal leaf glue is a tacky glue. We're going to stick that over here. And then decor glue tacky, we'll cover in a minute. Okay. Um, we also have um, some 3D glues. 3D glue pen and 3D glue paste. We will be demonstrating these two. We'll be demonstrating both of these today, 3D. Um, and then we have a couple of paper glues. So paper glues are cool, really cool for paper crafting. If you do journals or notebooks or scrapbooks, um, paper glue is really nice because um, it doesn't warp the paper. So there are two different, uh, you know how when you glue something down and you let it dry, like the paper starts to warp and you can see the glue lines, etc. This product is specifically designed for use with paper to prevent that. Um, there are two different ones. There's matte and there's clear. Okay, so the matte does dry clear, but it's a matte surface it dries more matte this one dries more a little bit more glossy okay so there are two different paper glues just depends on what you want i mean if you're just gluing two different peeps of um uh paper together it doesn't matter which one you have which one you use right but if it's going to be showing like if you're gluing glitter or something, it's going to be showing through. It depends on what the surface of your paper is. So you'd probably want to match the surface of your paper. Okay, so those two. Um, and then in its, uh, its own special glue here, we have a gem glue. Okay, so gem glue, um, the way you use this, this is for like rhinestones. It's not quite like E6000. It's not, um, I wouldn't I wouldn't compare it to E6000. It's more like for, um, you know, like if you're gonna glue some rhinestones or something on a purse, um, it's, it's got, it's kind of thin, right? So and let me shake it up a little bit. Um, and, Basically, you would glue your rhinestone down, and then this requires like a uh, heat setting. Here we go. Um, this requires heat setting. That's the consistency for um, once it's dry, you have to heat set it to activate it to create that permanent bond. So gem glue, we have gem glue as well. I'm not going to demonstrate that. Um, you know, it's not something that I use. I, I use a lot, but we have it. Okay. So let's talk, we're gonna do, we're not gonna demonstrate the Express Glue because I use that all the time in my lives. I think most of our creators use Express Glue. We're not gonna demonstrate those. We will take a look at um, the 3D first. Let's take a look at that. And the 3D paint and glue pen, um, are really nice to use with foils. They do, so I have put the 3D glue paste, <coughs> I put this through a stencil. It's like a thick, pasty glue, and it stays tacky. And I have put it through a stencil here. It takes a minute to dry, that's why I did this ahead of time. But you run it through a stencil just like any other paste. Let me show it to you. 
So it's it's got some body to it and it's pasty. And the difference between like this and say heavy body gel is that it does remain tacky. It's meant to be used with foils. Um, so I do happen to have some color foil here. Let's break one out. Which color do I want to use? I have so many foils here. Let's see. Um, metal leaf. Let's use this one. This one's pretty. This is a uh, magenta. Um, so I have put this, I used the spring to mask stencil. Do you guys want me to demonstrate how to put it through a stencil? I don't, I mean, I don't think it's necessary, but maybe you do. Maybe you do. I did this probably, I did it about 830. So it's taken an hour and a half to dry. It's ready to use when it's clear. Okay. So when it goes on, it's, it's white. And then once it's clear, it's ready to use. So do you need me to demonstrate how to put that through a stencil or no? Um, so it took about an hour and a half for it to set up. Once it turns clear, it's ready to use. So in this case, it is now ready to use. And we're going to take this one. This is the um, decor foil. Mm. Okay, so this is the de decor foil. All right, thank you guys. We'll save us. We'll save ourselves a little bit of time. Um, all right, so I'm just gonna lay this on here. This is the decor foil in magenta. And we will start to um, press this down. Let's see. I have one of my little scrapers. I don't have one of my little scrapers handy. Let's see what I have. Um, maybe a credit card or something. Oh, here we go. I'll try this one. So if you have a little scraper or something, this one's probably not. Let's just use a knife um and you can go over the top of that dried surface you can see it's starting to make an impression right away So we are going to have a whole separate session on foils. Um, so we'll save any questions about foils for later. But these are all the different glues that work with foils, because we can we can we can spend a whole bunch of time talking about foils. So look how pretty that is against the black. This is magenta. And I used the 3D glue paste. So this one works very well with foils or flakes because it stays tacky. Okay, so we'll have a whole separate session on all the foil and flake products, but there's a whole, there also know there's a whole array of glues that work with those products. Okay, so 3D glue paste and it is it is 3d it does have some dimension because it it's like i put it through a stencil so it is raised yes it does pop it's amazing okay look how pretty that is just gorgeous um so i i could definitely see myself i've i've used these before on the backs of books um mixed media Foils are awesome and they're um, they are underappreciated for how amazing they are because that's a very quick that was a very quick way to achieve an effect like that. Okay, so we'll put that to the side. Um, Gina, you would seal this with just a um, a water-based glossy sealer. 
water-based glossy sealer. And again, um, I'm going to cover foils on its own topic, but it depends on the type of foil that you use is what you would seal it with. Uh, this is decor foil, it's plastic based. So, we, so you would use a water-based sealer. Um, if you're talking about metal leaf, you would use a solvent-based sealer, okay? But again, this is not, that's not the session for today. For this particular one, you would use a water-based glossy sealer. All right. If you wanted to seal it, you don't have to seal it. Like if you're, you, if you're doing this for mixed media, you don't have to seal it. If you're doing it for furniture, then you probably want to seal it. Okay. So the same exact product in pen form is called, um, is the 3D glue pen. And this one you can, let me see if I have, um, here, let me show you. So this one, if you have certain things that you want to outline, so I did this tissue box and I used the, um, my spring, one of my spring papers, first bloom. And I just outlined some of the areas with the 3D glue pen. Okay. Like I outlined a little bit of the butterfly. So it's like drawing. It's a drawing tip. You could also outline over a stamp, one of the IOD stamps or a Tim Holtz stamp, stamp it down and then take the outline or just highlight certain areas. Okay, here I use the paste through a stencil and then here I use the pen. Um, yeah, so just to give it some decorative touches in your own handwriting, you can write it, write, you know, write something, it's a pen. <laughs> All right, so I did this. I did a free form, some free form curly cues this morning. Notice it's still a little bit white here. This one takes longer to dry just because it tends to get a little bit thicker um, in some areas. It's like you, you can't really get it even when it comes out of when you squeeze it out of the pen. So it does take a little bit longer to dry. And I'm just going to go ahead and use the same foil sheet to show you here. It may not get it all, but so a little more free form um, customizable, you know, you don't have to put it through a stencil. You're just drawing stuff on. I'm being um, chintzy here. I really should should have just grabbed a new sheet, but I still have stuff on. I'm using what I didn't use on this sheet because what happens is when it pulls up the foil, it leaves a lot behind, but you got to put it in the right area to to get it. So stick it down enough; it'll pull. It'll keep pulling it off. Try not to waste all my stuff, you know. So this is how it looks like a free form. Yeah. Well, and that's why I painted it black because I really wanted you guys to be able to see the effect. And so, you know, imagine using this with like a stamp. You stamp it down and then you trace. You don't even have to trace the whole thing. Just trace some areas that you want. You want them to be a little bit elevated or accentuated. Then you would use the 3D glue pen. Trace it out and just pop your foil over the top. Very easy. These foils, again, I think they're underappreciated. Um, very, very simple to use. 
much easier than say flakes. Uh, when we get to that demo, we'll talk about the advantages and disadvantages of both. Okay, so this one is the decor foil in magenta. And it uh, even says on the package, use with Pentart 3D glue. Okay. Good morning, Amanda. All right. So those are the 3D. And then here's an example of a project using both. Okay. So fun, fun, fun. Super fun product. All right. Let's put those to the side. <clears throat> I didn't understand when I, so I had those for a while and I didn't understand what I would do with them. And then I played with them and I was like, oh, okay, wow, that's awesome. All right, so let's move on. Let's move on to paper. Um, paper glue. Let's see. To make sure I pull something that you guys are allowed to see. All right, so let's let's say um, let's say hypothetically I was making a journal or something, you know, just hypothetically, and I wanted to make some sort of little pocket. Let's say let's use this. And then maybe this. Um, maybe I'm gonna make like a flip out, a flip out pocket. Um, here, let's do this. Get, let's get another piece of. Um, let's get something else. Actually, we can just use the side of this. All right. So let's say that I'm making. Oh, I like this one too. I like this section too. Or need at least a straight edge. Okay. All right. So let's say I'm just going to make a, myself a little journal pocket for my hypothetical journal. And I'm just going to cut this out. I'm going to cut this out. Um, cut this one here. Doesn't have to be perfect. Journals aren't perfect, are they? That's why they're called junk journals. All right, so. We got the seahorse. We'll cut out the little seahorse. Hypothetical, <laughs> Amanda. You you know you, I know why you're laughing. You know why I'm laughing. Okay. All right. Let's see what else. I, maybe I want this anchor here too for the other side. Uh, so let's make it this anchor for the other side. <clears throat> Can also use double sided tape, but um, some people prefer glue because you can get a thinner line with glue. <clears throat> All right. So let's say I have, um, so this is from our, uh, seaside grading scrapbook set, you guys, which is double-sided. This one is not double-sided because this is my test print at home version. This is not, um, this is not an authorized copy. This is my test print at home version. 
which is fine. All right, so let's say that I want to make myself a little pocket that I'm going to put in my little journal and I want to use paper glue to seal them together. And I just chose the mat here. Um, again, this one is going to come out. Let's see if I can zoom in. This is the paper glue. This one is going to come out very similar to the express glue with that fine tip. So you can get yourself a very thin line. For scrapbooking or journal making. And make sure I'm going the right direction here. And then I can press that down. And I'm leaving this side open. So here's my little, here's my little pocket right here. So I now have a little pocket. And then what I could do is attach like another strip of um, cardstock in between here or on either side here and make it kind of a little flippy pocket. I think I have a little hole puncher. Let me see. Let's see. Very basic. Uh, very basic. Here we go. circle hole puncher so i have a circle hole puncher and what i can do on the side that's going to remain open so this side is remaining going to remain open right this is my pocket and then i'm just going to do like a little half circle cut for a tab maybe i do it Nope, that didn't work. I didn't get it far enough in, I don't think. I haven't used this before, as you can probably tell. That is jinky. That is quite jinky. There we go. Oh, that's a big tab. Look how big that tab is. Anyway, you get the idea. So you can make a little hole punch tab for your little pocket. And it stays flat. It doesn't warp. I mean, it's warping slightly, but not like a very wet, um, not like the Express Glue would. Am I doing a coastal beachy journal? What? Um, Betty, I might be. I don't know. I might be. There might be something coming here pretty soon. You never know. Okay. So there's that. You know, same thing like if you wanted to make um, a, a tag. Let's say I wanted to make a little tag. A double-sided tag. Let's say um, hypothetical tag. And, well, Sue, that is so smart. Like I said, I haven't used that little hole punch before. I bought it to make these little things, but I haven't used it like that yet. So let's say I just wanted to make a tag, a double-sided tag. Um, of course, your, your um, cutting is going to be a lot more precise than mine. Okay, so like a tag, boom, and then a tag here. And then I'm gonna glue these two things together. So for gluing pieces together, I 
and then you can spread it out a little bit. This is the mat again. Just spread it out a little bit. Okay. And then it's almost like what I what I would almost refer to this as like a uh, dry. It's almost it's drier. It's not a very wet glue. So, but it does stick really well to paper. So, an excellent excellent paper glue. All right. You can, but it's not really necessary because this is just not going to warp that that much. Once it's dry, it will stay flat. So that's the whole point of this particular glue is it will warp uh, a heck of a lot less than a regular glue. So this one is designed for paper crafting. I'm not gonna say it won't warp at all. I'm not gonna say that. And yes, if it does, you can put a, um, you can certainly put a, uh, a book on top but the whole point of this one is so that it minimizes that all right so if you're a journaler or scrapbooker and you like to layer things on maybe i like maybe i like that there okay then you can use this paper glue for all of that so clear and matte, two different kinds. Again, the difference between the clear and the matte is this one dries matte, but it, it also dries clear. This one is dries clear, but it also dries a little bit glossy. All right. I don't know why they made two different versions. <laughs> I would have been fine with one version, but generally, except for heavy body gel, I'm going to choose matte stuff. All right. And actually, if heavy body gel came in a matte clear, I would probably use the matte clear. But it doesn't. All right. So let's move on now. Um, so, yeah. So, Sue's right. From the other side, you can see where it's um, crimping. All right. So now for my hypothetical journal, I have a couple of fun little pockets and tags. Boom. Hypothetical. All right. Yes, you do need to get some of that glue. You definitely do. Okay, so next up, let's talk about, um, let's talk about regular tacky glues for metal leaf. Um, there are three different glues that remain tacky that you can apply uh, foils or gold leafing products to. There are three different ones. We're gonna talk about, we're gonna do a demonstration on one of them, but we're gonna talk about all three. Um, and the way I like to think of this is in terms of grade, like what projects are they designed to be for? Um, number one, hobby glue tacky. Uh, this is meant to be used with crafting tile. This was the first one that they made that um, remained tacky that you could apply uh, foils or um, even velvet powders to hobby glue tacky. Okay. You can also use this like in Elmer's glue like in between two objects, it will definitely act as a universal type of glue, but just remember that it does remain tacky. You could also use this for vellum, paper, um, et cetera. So if you're sandwiching in between something and the glue is not gonna seep out, it doesn't matter if it stays tacky, right? Because it's still gonna be glued down. But if the surface, if it's, if it's gonna remain on the surface, uh, you might not want to choose this as an all-purpose because, because it, 
if it's seeping out, it will stay tacky. So this is like a craft grade, okay? Um, the metal leaf glue was the next, the next, and this is a higher quality, higher grade. This is more for mixed. This one was designed for mixed media pro, um, projects, and it does come in this smaller size. Um, and it is a glue that you uh, brush on or dab on, let's say through a stencil or just around some edges for metal leafing. Um, the description of it says it's a metal leaf glue. I can't even read it. It's, it's all of these are water-based products. Um, apply the glue in a thin layer. You definitely need a thin layer until it becomes transparent uh, for metal leaves, okay? Um, so for metal, their metal leaf product, it came out, at, it came out at the same time as, um, you know, they had these metal leaf products and this glue came out the same time as that. So it was designed to be used with metal leaf, um, for mixed media artists. Okay. So this is a very ver versatile glue. It comes in the small size. This is great for mixed media. Uh, but let's talk about decor, decor glue tacky. So of the three tacky glues, and this is not a 3D. These are not 3D. Remember, they're separate 3D products that we already discussed. These are going to be thin. You put them on in a thin layer. Um, this one is like the powerhouse. This one was actually designed to be used with furniture um, for furniture artists. And so it's kind of um, branded in that same way. So see the decor paint, chalky, their chalk paint, which was designed for furniture artists. Decor glue tacky is branded with exact, you know, exactly the same way. So it's sort of in that furniture artist labeling. If you only want to choose one, this is the one you would choose because it can do all of it. Um, and it is, in my opinion, the strongest. This one um, is really my go-to. Doesn't mean these other ones aren't good, but uh, this one is really the powerhouse. Um, <laughs> excuse me. So let's go with, let's take a look at it. The cord glue tacky. The cord glue tacky, you are going to be able to use this with um, velvet powder glitter, uh, foils, flakes, um, all kinds of stuff. Let's take a look at something and let's do, um, here, let's do, let's do a couple of eggs. And now we're past Easter. Let's do a couple little eggs. We'll do a foil egg and then we'll do a velvet powder egg. All right, so for velvet powder, let's do velvet powder first. And I'm gonna always, so you always wanna paint, for velvet powder, you wanna paint the bottom there. Um, same color as the velvet powder that you're going to be using. I'm going to, I'm going to do purple. So oh, let's just do purple. Because if you miss a spot and it shows through, it will be a lot less obvious if the underneath part is painted. So it's like a camouflaging technique. All right. Let's just use that same purple for our tacky.
if you're interested in this color, this is amethyst. All right. And let's blow dry. Do I have a purple foil? Mm. Let's see, what do I want to use? Mm. Red, blue, maybe I use a uh, I'll use this one. All right. So now we're going to take our tacky glue. I'm going to cover for my velvet powder. I am going to cover the whole thing with the tacky glue. And you want um, a soft brush and you want a thin, even layer. Make sure the whole thing gets covered with the tacky glue in a thin, even layer. All right. And then for this one, uh, I'm gonna use foils. I don't want the whole thing covered. I just want the edges. So I'm gonna come in around my edges. for my foils. Because I don't have a purple. I mean, I could cover the whole thing, but I just want to show you a couple different effects. All right. This one is gonna dry pretty fast. This one takes a little bit longer to set up and dry. Okay, so this one dries faster. Hello, Carol. As it turns clear and it's ready to use. And let's get a paper towel here for underneath this velvet powder. All right, so now we're just going to use this purple velvet powder. We're going to sprinkle that on. Hi, Betty. Yes, you can use a dryer with this glue. No problem. Let's sprinkle that on. And then you're going to start pressing down with your finger, moving it around a little bit.
and then you're going to kind of take it so you press it down first and then you can take it and sort of move it around in a gentle circular motion this velvet powder goes a long way you guys We'll have a whole separate, I think we have a whole separate demo on velvet powder and all the colors and ways to use them, etc. Right. Terry Lightsey has a class. I don't know if she's still offering it, but she has a whole class on, um, mixing mixing colors to achieve special colors and velvet powders and she makes a cute little bunny using our spring birds okay so i'm just going to tap that off very important to tap off and now we have um a cute velvety egg I don't know how well you guys can see the velvet texture okay so that's velvet powder um with tacky decor glue tacky sharon did she use uh decor glue tacky for the class okay all right next up we're going to do um foils around the edges of this egg. And I'm going to use this one. This is the Baroque gold. This is the decor foil. Actually, let's use a metal foil. We use the decor foil for the, um, Let's just use this one. Why not? This one's got some fun colors in it. This one is a uh, metal leaf with some variegated colors. I can't remember what it's called. It doesn't stay on here. It's V01 is the number. Um, it's one of the variegated ones because it has some different colors in it. These are really pretty, the variegated ones. So somebody asked me, Gina asked me earlier about sealing this. For this one, because it contains metal, you would want to seal it with um, a solvent-based sealer because it contains metal. Otherwise, it'll oxidize and it will look dull so i'm just going to tap the metal leaf is a lot thinner than the decor foil to handle um so i'm just going to kind of lightly tap it on there and then i'm going to come back with a soft brush and then wipe it away notice how it's like falling apart and crumpling in my hands whereas the decor foil stayed in a solid sheet on these the whole piece is the product whereas on the decor foil the product is attached to like a carrier sheet okay let me put this back That's really interesting. All right. Yeah, it is. All right, so I'm just gonna take my finger and flatten it out. And I have a piece here that didn't get covered. Flatten it out. And then you're gonna take, um, I have a lot of, along the edges too. I'm 
Okay, and then you're going to take a soft brush to wipe away the excess. And it's staying exactly, it's sticking to the exact parts where I uh, applied the decor glue tacky with my brush and nowhere else. Okay. So, um, We get a lot of questions about sealers and solvent-based sealers. Um, these metal leaf and metal flake products are the only other products beside and metal pigments. Um, anything with the word metal in it, pigment, flakes, foils, metal. These are the products, the only other products besides fine line that you need to use a solvent based sealer. Um, we're going to skip ahead just a minute because I want to show you the reason. I want to show you what happens. I'm going to ruin my egg real fast because it's a very low stakes project. I'm going to ruin it for you and show you what happens when you use a, a water based sealer. Um, I think it's important to demonstrate, and I have an opportunity to do that. Um, so let me do that. Let me ruin my project for you. Okay. So I'm going to ruin this project for you so you can see how you would ruin your beautiful metal leaf. You would take a glossy varnish water-based. Okay, this is the one you'd really want to use is this clear varnish gloss, but that's not what we're going to use here because I want to show you what happens if you use the wrong sealer on this project product. So if you ever get a result that looks like this, you'll be like, oh yeah, I remember. Um, so this is the water-based one. And when you touch this to your um, to your egg, oh, it's not that bad. I've seen it happen a lot worse. But when you touch this to your egg or your metal leaf, what starts to happen is, and over time it'll get worse, but what happens is that shine dulls down immediately and it starts to oxidize. <laughs> so it's a lot less shiny over here where I applied it than it is over here where I didn't apply it. So it's like it's starting to oxidize it immediately. Um, it's a lot more prevalent like on regular gold uh etc it's still pretty but it's just it's taken that shine down several degrees yeah i only did have i normally in a situation like this and you like it's a lot more visible in person but all of this beautiful luster and shine is now gone from this side okay um it looks, it's still shiny, but it looks a lot more dull than that side where I didn't do it. Now, if I had used the solvent one, which I'm not going to do because I don't have my PPE on at the moment, um, this would stay exactly intact. <laughs> it does. It really does dull it. And I don't know how well that's coming through. Um, so anyway, you guys, uh, now is your time 
we're at the end. So now is your time for Q and A. Let me come back over. Let me know on all the three products or on the three groupings of products that we demoed, what questions do you have? Could use it. Yeah. I mean, Amanda, like I have, there have been projects where that is the effect that I wanted. Um, I didn't want it so shiny. I wanted it to look aged and oxidized. Um, so I, I used it and it was fine. If that's the look you're going for, it's okay. But if you really want that metal leaf look, then you have to apply the solvent based varnish because it's metal, right? So metal and water, what happens? It starts to oxidize. <laughs> Um, Betty, I don't think I'm going to be able to do, I am not going to be able to do any Tuesdays and Thursdays for the time being, because I'm actually allocating that time for my, um, oil painting practice while I get through. And I actually only have six weeks left. So I said eight, but I only have six weeks left. Um, so it's really important for me to spend that time to get through my, um, my oil painting practice. And I just don't have. Uh, I don't have extra time during the week to be able to do that. So for now, it is going to be on hold. And if I if I can squeeze one in here and there, I'll try. But um, I've got to, I really have to focus on um, the oil painting and take the time when I can. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, this has been a, a goal of mine for a long time to do that. So I'm, um, I'm going to do it. <laughs> and I'm already so happy that I've, um, you know, I'm by no means have mastered anything, but that I've committed to, um, to work through some of my internal roadblocks. So thank you. Thank you guys. All right. So any other, let's see, which ones did I say dried clear? Um, all of them, all of these glues will dry clear. Uh, every single one of these glues will dry clear. I'm looking at all of them that I talked on. Um, some will dry. So we have three different finishes, really. We have got tacky, matte, and clear, or glossy. They will all dry clear, though. Any other questions? Trina, thank you. Yes, definitely. And I'll be back, you know, and what I'm hoping what will happen is that will it will, um, you know, and I told somebody else, somebody else emailed me, you know, messaged me and was like, I'm, you know, um, she was very happy to hear me say that I right now it was more important for me to be a student than a teacher. And it almost felt like I was giving her permission to do the same thing. And I said, absolutely. Sometimes you do have to hit the pause button to, you have to, as a teacher, you constantly have to learn new things in order to make your teaching better um, and break through plateaus in your art and in life, right? So, um, you know, I sort of feel like I'm at a plateau with my mixed media art. I need to learn some new things. And it doesn't mean that I'm going to incorporate any oil painting at all in our, um, in our mixed media work, because they're two totally separate things, but there are things that I might learn, um, structural concepts and things like that, that I can apply to mixed media. I will not be doing any oil painting lives. Um, Betty, that oil painting to me is a very, um, it's a very different process. Uh, and it is my, uh, what should I say? It's like yoga. It's like a meditation almost. <laughs> yes, the female behind me is the next one that I'm working on. Um, so it's, it is a very personal type of journey. I will not be doing any, it is not something that I feel I can teach. I would not even attempt to teach it. So for, for now, I am in this very much a student category, but it will help me to be a better artist overall. Is And so it doesn't mean that I won't be incorporating some of the concepts in my other 
lives or demonstrations, um, but I will not be teaching that as a as a practice. And I may do like some um, fast forward, you know, like sped up, you know, painting things. I may do that, but it's not something that I feel I, I am equipped to teach. Um, thank you. Thank you. Okay, you guys. So any other questions about glue? Next week, we're doing something else. I'm not sure what, but I'll be ready and I'll be here. <laughs> I will be here next week. Um, if there aren't any other questions, then we will say goodbye for the week and I'll see you next week. Yeah, totally different. It's totally different process. Um, okay. Well, thank you guys for being here. And I hope to see you again next week. And have a great week. All right. Take care, everybody. Bye.